Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. We are going to be covering the period from the 27th of February up until the 5th of March, as well as also looking at a few games that came out for the Switch in the last few weeks that either stealth dropped or didn't make it into one of these lists for whatever reason. So what's coming out this week? Well, let's find out. Starting with those few games that are already out then, and the first one is called Healer's Quest. This describes itself as a comedic RPG and sees you taking on the role of the healer of the party rather than the actual party themselves. It sounds as if the party are quite inept and will get themselves into a lot of trouble so you'll need to really be on it to keep them alive. I included this one because I really do like the art style, plus it's always nice to see a slightly different take on a classic formula, and the concept reminds me a little bit of another game on the Switch, one that we've reviewed actually, called Hero Land, where again you were assisting the party rather than being a part of it, and I'll stick a link to that review in the top in comment if you want to have a look at that game. Another game that came out recently then, we have Persephone. Now this is an isometric block puzzle game by the looks of it, which I'm assuming is referring to the Queen of the Underworld, Wife of Hades in Greek mythology, the aforementioned Persephone. Judging by the game's theme, that seems to hold true, as it looks to be a puzzle game where you use death to try and overcome the puzzles. By the looks of it, every time you get killed, you'll leave your body behind, and then you can use that body as a tool to solve the various problems. It's selling for just £5, and I do like these sort of games, plus I'm a sucker for anything to do with Greek mythology, so it may be one that I stick on the wish list. And then we have the Blizzard Arcade Collection, coming hot on the heels of the Capcom Arcade Stadium that came out last week. This brings together three games from Blizzard Entertainment's past, with the three games included being The Lost Vikings, Rock and Roll Racing, and Blackthorn. Now, I was a huge fan of The Lost Vikings on the Super Nintendo back in the day, and Rock and Roll Racing, which was another fantastic game. I never got around to playing Blackthorn, but I'd like to try it. And it appears that this collection comes with the original versions of the game, plus what they call a new definitive edition for each one. It includes the usual mod cons that you would expect from a collection such as this these days, things like rewind, save states, etc., but also has a few other bits and bobs such as concept art, a music player, and behind the scenes interviews. It's selling for £16.99 or your regional equivalent. And the final one for the games that are already out, this is Steven Universe Unleashed the Light. Now I don't know very much at all about this series, I know it's on Cartoon Network, and I also know it already has a game on the Switch, I think that's called Save the Light. But this one is an RPG that has seven playable characters from the show, allows you to customise your team, was co-written by the creator of the show Rebecca Sugar, and I also believe has some, if not all, of the voiceover cast from the show. So moving on to this week's games then, and the first one is called Thunder Flash. Now this comes from Rattalika Games, who are very prolific in terms of publishing games for the Switch, and they're usually very similar in terms of being pixel art based and incredibly cheap, and this one is no different. I don't often include their games I must admit, but I did want to include this one because it looks to be a top down run and gun in the vein of something like Akari Warriors or Shock Troopers, and I'll be honest, I love those sort of games, so if it's anything like those for a fiver, I'd definitely be on board. The one thing I will say is that you can buy Shock Troopers on the Switch for about £6.50, so even at its cheap price it does definitely have some competition in the genre, but if you've played all of those games to death and want something similar for a good price, this may well be it. And next we have Gunslugs 2, which releases on the 28th and sells for £7.19, although it does have 15% off of that price up until launch. This joins its predecessor, Gunslugs on the Switch, and whilst I've never played that game, as far as I know it's pretty well thought of. It was out on the Vita years before, and by all accounts is a very solid action shooter. This looks to be more of the same, taking that fast paced action and mixing it with a whole host of pop culture references from the 80s and 90s. It includes 7 worlds with 8 levels per world, end of level bosses, and a whole host of weapons to find and use. If you have played the first one, perhaps you can let us know in the comments section if it is indeed any good. The next game releasing on the 2nd of March is Monster Jam Steel Titans 2. This is published by THQ Nordic and is another game that joins its predecessor in coming to the Switch. This one promises more trucks and new worlds and says that you can play with friends in both online and split screen multiplayer modes. There are 5 outdoor worlds to explore and secrets to unlock. 
plus 38 different trucks to choose from, all of which you can upgrade over the course of the career mode. It also mentions that there are authentic stadium events and different race modes. It sells for £36.74 and it feels like there are loads of monster truck games on the Switch now. Every other week there seems to be another one. Whether this one's any good, well, we'll find out next week. And then we have a game called Wind Peaks, which is selling for £9.99 and basically looks like a Where's Wally type game. Now, you don't call him Wally over in North America, do you? You call him Waldo, isn't it? Now, he's definitely a Wally. I mean, he gets lost every bloody book. You can't be much more of a Wally than that. Anyway, this is a hidden object game which has you exploring 10 handmade levels, telling the tale of a group of scouts that are looking for a host of items. It calls itself a relaxing, wholesome experience with fun and peaceful interactions, casual gameplay and relaxing forest sounds. No death, no violence, no hyper-realism, last-gen graphics and no procedural world. There you go. In a cold and cynical world, reading that has made me feel like someone's given me a hug and made me a cup of tea. Very nice. Coming out on the 4th is a game called Mail Mole. Now this is a 3D platformer and I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that this is the development team's first game. It actually reminds me very much of the game, is it Super Lucky's Tale? Also on the Switch but started on the Xbox. In fact, we've reviewed that game and again, I'll stick that link in the top pinned comment. It says that this one has over 30 levels with a host of collectibles to find and introduces new hero Multi the Mail Mole. He'll use his abilities to get about the place and this will probably be a throwback to the 90s which was a classic era for 3D platforming. Next we have quite an interesting looking game called Nosia, at least I'm assuming it's a silent G, apologies if that's not the case. This takes place on a spaceship and calls itself a sci-fi social deduction RPG. The basic idea is that some of the crew have been taken over by a life form known as Nosia and you must try to deduce which ones of them they are and put them into a cold sleep, taking votes on which of the members to do this to. It's very similar, I suppose, in premise to the game Among Us, although it looks as if the gameplay itself is very different. And it also reminds me of a visual novel that I played on the Switch and very much enjoyed, a game called Raging Loop, albeit that one had a horror setting. It's selling for £22.49 and it comes out on the 4th of March. Next up is a game called Kill It With Fire, which has been on Steam since August last year. This is a first person action game where you go about finding spiders and then basically just wrecking them. There are dozens of weapons to use and basically once you've tracked the spiders down, you just unleash on them using the weapons you've found to take them down. It has a score on Metacritic in the high 60s and the couple of reviews that I read on there about it alluded to it being mindless fun. It's selling for £13.49 but does have 20% off of that price up until the 5th of March. And the final game for the week then we have Harvest Moon One World. Now the Harvest Moon games that release these days are not necessarily the Harvest Moon games you remember depending on when you got into the series. The series in Japan known as Bokujo Monogatari, hopefully I've got that pronunciation almost right, used to be localised in the West by Natsume as Harvest Moon. However, when localization and publishing rights moved over to XC Games for that particular series, they couldn't take the name with them, so that series is now known as Story of Seasons. Natsume now make their own games under the name of Harvest Moon, and I believe they share publishing duties with Rising Star games in certain regions. This is one such game. Now, I've only played one of the Harvest Moon games since that happened. That was Harvest Moon Light of Hope, 
I played a fair bit of it with my daughter and while she enjoys it and it's perfectly playable I guess, for me it's a pale imitation of what Harvest Moon used to be and what Story of Seasons now is. By the sounds of it this new one is similar fare to all the others, it says grab your pitchfork and get stuck into agricultural life as you harvest crops and tend to animals on your fledgling farm, earn money from your wares and grow your humble farm into a thriving estate. It's selling for £39.99 if you are interested in the Harvest Moon games these days, and soon enough it will be in competition with a Story of Seasons game, as there is one of those releasing for the Switch at the end of March. So there you have it, some of the games releasing next week. I hope you enjoyed that video and my little tangent about Harvest Moon. Hopefully I got that information right. I'm pretty sure that's just about there. Please do remember to leave a like if you did like this video. Not the greatest week, let's be honest, in terms of releases. Although there are some decent games on the horizon I've seen in the next couple of weeks, so there's that to look forward to. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.